Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Noah's Trucking Podcast. I have some exciting news to share that's do with the podcast setup. And I also have some interesting trucking topics for you today, such as best paying trucking companies and truck drivers might be replaced by AI trucking. Will trucking get better in 2025 and more? We'll be right back after the intro. Alright, we are back. So let's get into topic one. So, as you can see, I have a headset on. Right? It's a Razer headset. Uh, I got it, hopefully, to improve the sound for you guys. Um, I still have my Fee, my fee Fine microphone. Um, those are for, like... That's just for, like, my Discord and gaming setup. This is for my podcast setup. I also got uh, something else for the podcast set up, but we'll talk about that later in the show. So let's move on to the next topic. So, topic two, self-driving trucks. All right. So, let me look at my notes here. All right, debate worth having. Will truckers be replaced by self-driving trucks? Um... By 2035, more than half of vehicles sold in the United States and two-thirds in China could be completely um, AI-driven, or self-driven, basically. According to reports by Goldman's, I don't know how to pronounce his, pronounce his last name, his or hers, um, whoever this is, um, anyways, The trucking sector could be, I don't know, some some of these, sometimes I think these people, I don't know. Anyways, uh, basically what it's saying is um, businesses are wanting to save money from having to pay people, actual truck drivers, and just have AI driving trucks could save them. You know how companies are, it's all about saving money, but I potentially don't see that this is really going to happen. Um, in my opinion, I, I just, I mean, what would, you know, who's going to unload it? Robots? I mean, stuff can fail. You, you just can't depend. I, I just don't see as, even the technology, if it's there, like, what are we going to do for jobs? I mean, are people, is the government just going to give us free money? Like, you know, I know certain, nobody's going to give me any money, and that's the thing with pro- AI. It's not. I don't really like AI, honestly. I think it's a waste of time. Um, in my opinion, for some things, um, it's just it's not there. It's really not. It's just a little gimmick, I think. Um, I say get rid of all that garbage and uh, just keep the truckers. I mean, you can never. I mean, even technology can fail. Like. Is it going to be safe enough? Is it going to know, like, detect, okay, you need to stop on the brakes? Is it going to, how's it going to, like, know when to open the doors? How's it going to stop somebody from breaking into it? You know, like, I don't know, man. Um, let's see, what else does it say here? That, that's just my opinion on it. Um, you know, I, I, people could have different opinions on it, but I know, Certainly, a lot of truckers are going to feel probably the same way of having, like, um, and they're not going to be repl- want to be replaced. I mean, trucking is a really good job. I mean, if you, you know, I mean, I'm really passionate about trucking. As you can see, as my channel, my podcast, and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would be really pissed if that happened, you know. But. And it's just saying, you know, I don't know, it's, let's see, what else does this say here? They're wanting to be charged by, uh, you know, electric, you know, and I'm, 
I don't think the electric vehicles are going to go anywhere anymore now. Uh, now that Donald Trump's in office, I'm not trying to get politi involved in politics, but, and I'm sorry if you're not for him, but um, I was never for the EV vehicles. I just, I think they're garbage and utter trash. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, I don't even like, I technically don't even like Tesla. I really, I mean, they're not, you cannot be, a, a, like, I mean, why are you trying to replace Reinvent, reinvent the wheel here, like you know, we have technology. It works. Don't fix it if it's not broken. Like, and why are you trying to save the earth? Like, I'm not going to try to get religious here, but like, if God was to stop the earth, and I'm sorry if you're not a believer, but I am. If God wants to stop the earth, snap his fingers up. There's no, how are you going to save it? Like, there's no saving it. Like, it it's people. I I don't know. I just have different views. I I don't know. I'm not trying to, you know get personal here with anybody but like i don't know it's just my opinion like do not take jobs away from the humans like it's it's now you can make life easier like and you know make add technology to help truck but don't replace them don't replace the jobs i mean what the hell like what are people going to do for jobs you know like fast i heard they're wanting to replace cashiers for fat why what are these young kids going to do because you know 16 year old they you know they're, they need to work for money to get a job, but they're not going to be able to work because most places you can't do that stuff. You know what I mean? You're very limited. With, a 16 year old can't drive a semi truck. Obviously, they're just not, the maturity level is not there yet. And they're still in school. So, you know, I, I don't know. That's just my, that's just my thoughts on this. Um, but the case against it, going about these two, about the uh, self-driving trucks, but anyways, moving on from that topic, um, let's go to our uh, topic three here. Um, the best paying trucking companies. This is something more positive. Um, okay. Best paying trucking companies in 2024. Um, you know, and here's the list. Old Dominion Freight. Um, I think that's Mercer Transportation, Cisco Foods, Walmart, EPS, GP Transco, Martin Transport, ABF Freight Systems, and I don't know how to pronounce this one, but it's B-A-R-R-N-U-N-N -N Transportation. And I think that's Hogan, Hugan, Hogan, I believe it's Hogan. Um, those are some of the best paying trucking companies. Um, I, I GP Transco. I thought about. Um, I, I hear some good things about GP Transco. Um, that's about looking into them, not driving for them, but just um, I, and I mean virtually. Um, I'm not aware of real truck trip, but I drive virtually and I enjoy it. Role playing as a truck driver. I know some of you are going to say, "Why don't you just drive as a real well." If I did that, I would, it was just long, so I, I, that's another topic for another day. Um, I mean, it's not, I'm not saying I'm never going to become a truck driver, but as of right now, um, I have other goals. I, and I want to be a truck, I want, I like being a virtual truck driver, talking about trucking, you know, interacting with real truck drivers, but as far as driving, um, a real truck, um. I think once I financially get my own place and I'm more, um, and I've been driving a car for a couple more years because I just recently got my license in August, so I want to get some more, I want to know how to get some experience driving a car before I drive a big ass, you know, excuse my language, but, um, like, I don't know, like a couple thousand tons, like, a uh, big rig, you know, big machine, so, and death killing machine, you know, so, yeah. Uh, let's say, let's see, oh, I mean, let's see here, Old Dominion Freight, Freight Line, uh, let's see, uh, local drivers average 78,000 a year, line haul drivers average 100,000 a year, team drivers average 202,000 per year. 
uh, I think this is Mercer Transportation. Uh, owner operators average over two hundred thousand per year. Um, yeah. Cisco Foods, a typical Cisco, a typical driver at Cisco will make around eighty thousand per year. Hmm. All right, Walmart. Now, I don't think Walmart actually has their own uh, transport. I think they're. Well, let's see. Uh, maybe they do. I don't know. That's what I'm reading here. Uh, headquarters in Arkansas. Bento, Benton, oh, Benton. I think it's Benton. Art, Bentonville. I think that's how you pronounce it. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. I'm not really good at pronouncing stuff sometimes. Um, but yeah, they, uh. Long, longer drivers, the longer the driver stays, the more they reward, rewarded with pay, uh, they, and great hours. For example, a driver who's been at the company for 20 years could be making as much as 150000 while only working 9 to 5 Monday through Friday because of its, because it, of this, it can be difficult as a new driver, but sticking around is typically worth your while, so. That's I do hear good things about Walmart um, drivers. I hear a lot they do got good benefits and stuff. So I um I hear Walmart's pretty good to drive for. Um, so definitely check in. I think you have to have some experience. But you can't. So I'd say if you want to get experience, go for like a um go for like work for like Swift and I Swift. You can say it Swift. Swift is good too. They also have Walmart accounts, but you're not going to get the same benefits as you would at being an actual Walmart driver. So try to get some experience if you want to be a Walmart driver. And drivers can make up, and this is for Walmart, drivers can make up to 110000 in their first year with Walmart. Wow, that is, Walmart, like I said, Walmart seems like they have some good benefits, at least on paper here. So, UPS. Uh, like Walmart, UPS rewards its drivers for their turn, or I think that's how you spell it, uh, or I don't know, pronounce it. Uh, they also have a variety of driving positions. Truck drivers with their CDLs can move freight and a tractor trailer, but UPS also has paying positions for package delivery drivers and personal vehicle drivers. So that, if you want to be like a like, I think it's called Amazon. Um, what is it? Uh, Oh, Amazon Flex or something like that. You use your own vehicle. That's kind of what they're talking about for using your vehicle. And if you want to be a, um, like, drive one of their box trucks for, like, the package delivery, like, um, you can do that too. Um, but I think you have to do something with, pa you have to do package handling first, like, with the warehouse before you can be a driver, I think. I think that's how it works, but don't quote me on that. You'll uh, UPS is known for having a safe fleet of drivers and providing a variety of freight options. It can take drivers a while to reach high paying positions, but once you've got a few years under your belt, there, there you'll more likely than not to make more than the most truck drivers across the country. Like many companies on the list, the longer you've been there, the more money you make, and and it's easier to get the it's easier the jobs get so yeah that's what i hear with most trucking companies too um that's just what it is you know so yeah i mean i i think that's what people want to hurry up and get in the truck but you got to realize you got to stay with the company for a little bit like most jobs like even my my job my my job at um well i'm not gonna say where i work yet because um well, I'm sure you guys know. I, I work at Bell Source. It's like a gas station. So I'll just say, I mean, you guys probably see it from my short, my video shorts on YouTube. But, uh, what was I going to say? Um, even I have, I'm, I get like a raise every three months and it increases. So the more, the long, and I've been there for a year. So the longer you've been there, the more you'll make. Somebody's been there for like, maybe three or six years and they're making sixteen fifty or something like that. You got so you can't just 
coming to any company, even trucking, like that's not just for truck, any company you work for, even non trucking or trucking. That's what I wanted to say about Swift. Like, you people just want to get in there, you give them a chance, you know, you gotta work your way up. You, just because you're fresh, for you know, you're not just gonna get paid, they gotta, you gotta work your way up the ladder, you know, it's just how, how the world works with jobs. So, yeah, that's, I mean, I don't know what to tell people when they do that, but no, it's, Whatevs. Um. Yeah. And uh, pay for tractor trailer for UPS begins at thirty five dollars per hour. So yeah. Um. GP Transco. GP Transco is the newest company on the list, despite being a newer company in the industry. They are considerably, or, or no, constantly known for competitive pay. They have positions available for owner-operator, company drivers, and team drivers. All get, are paid very well. So, there you go. Uh, GP Transco is a technology-driven company which helps maximize which helps them maximize their driver earnings. In the first year, company drivers make between eighty thousand to ninety thousand, with the opportunity to, for a raise after six months. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, and they were founded in 2006, GP Transco, and Juliet, Joliet, Joliet, I think it's Joliet, Illinois, uh, yeah, so that is, uh, pretty cool. they are fairly new, yeah, so, I mean, they haven't been a lot, as long as most of them, uh, Martin Transport, Martin Transport is primarily a reaper carrier, so I thought, I thought they were. Uh, not only are they top pay certified carrier, but they were also one of the first carriers to introduce guaranteed pay. Wow, that is something I did not know. Uh, pay doesn't just last a month for a month or two; it lasts for the duration of your time. Wow. They are. They offer various pay positions, or they offer various positions for drivers, including regional, dedicated, and OTR routes. Which I'd probably do OTR, which by working for I like driving, exploring. Uh, their great pay and op- options for drivers mean say that they have one of the lowest turnover rates in the industry. Hold on, guys, I'm getting. T- my phone blowing up here. Sorry about that. All right, I'm back. Sorry. Um, where was I? Yeah, the lowest turnover rates in the industry. Drivers typically stay with the company until retirement. I don't... Well, that could be true. I've seen some older drivers. That's what, well, i see some older drivers, a lot of companies. But, yeah. Uh, drivers can expect a guaranteed minimum weekly paycheck that amounts to at least 70000 per year for new drivers, the rate they pay per mile is lower than some of the other companies on the list, but they're exceptionally high social social pay makes up for it. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Um, I'm not going to go into all these Thing you guys can just do some research, but it's just some of them. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's go to our next topic here. I feel like we talked about that uh, long enough, actually. Um, let's see, topic four. All right, news. New study shows why truck drivers quit and how firm, firms can freight, fight turnover. Yeah, fight turnover. All right. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to hit my microphone there. Um, a better understanding of why drivers quit can help um, address trucking logs, standards, driver retention problem. A new study by Stephanie P. Thomas, University of Arkansas, and some other names I can't pronounce. Uh, and Donnie F. Williams, University of Arkansas, analyzed why drivers cha change firms or quit trucking altogether. The article, man, I I got I gotta get better at pronouncing words. I'm not stupid, I, I promise, but I just have some time. Anyways, the turning turning point of driver burnout sheds lights on how jobs relate. Related burnout informs a driver. Decisions to quit, it also shows man managers what ways to effectively monitor and address burnout related issues before they call the drivers to leave the company. Now, there's a couple people I watch on YouTube that have quit trucking that I know of. Um, uh, Alex, the trucking guy, did a video. I haven't watched it yet. I need to. I need to watch. So I don't know if he actually quit or if it was a he's changing company. But I think he quit. So I'm gonna say he quit. But I'm not gonna say it for sure. I gotta watch the video. Anyways, I know that's one video. Um, Ches, a guy I used to watch. Um, Ches plays. Um, was worked for Swift, then did owner operator, and then he quit. Um, who else, who else, who else did I watch? Um, Riding with Dave. Um, right, well, Riding with Dave quit YouTube too, so he was actually a really cool. I think most of you would know Riding with Dave, he was actually a really cool guy. I don't know him personally, never spoke to him, but he, I can tell by his personality, he's pretty cool. He's a pretty cool guy. Um, what else? Um, who are, I mean, who else? Uh, who else would have joined? Oh, JBG Travels haven't quit, but he was talking about quitting. Um, so I don't know if he's going to, but he just... I think a lot of these drivers are getting burnt out by just... I, I don't really know what exactly, but a lot of them are starting to get burnt out and just want to do something different or just trucking isn't really for them. Now, JB Travels has been trucking for a long time, he said. I can't remember the exact year. He's been trucking for a while. Uh, riding with Dave has depression and stuff, and had some, and he just wasn't enjoying trucking either, really. So, a lot of these tr truck drivers um, just don't enjoy it anymore. Like, they do it, or it's just not meant for them. They just, you know. So, what it's saying, uh, there's some stuff that would make sense. Burnouts impact drivers' personal life, health, job performance, and also can cause them to quit. So, yeah, like, men our health, life, and health. Mental health, too, you know. Um, relationships, you know, can be, you know, leaving loved ones, a family, if you have kids, too, can be tough. And just a lot of it has to do, and pay, too. Pay's not there, too, with people. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's just, the deadlines, or you just, you just don't like it, so, um, there's just an article about this, um, talking about some of the things that, uh, you know, socialization, you know, you're being isolated, so, just all kinds of factors, uh, you just go to universityofarkansas.com and look up some stuff, and, you know, that's where I got my, my notes from on this, but, yeah, uh, let's go to topic five here. Uh, topic five is will trucking get better in 2025? Well, let's see here. Okay, this is called the trucking industry forecast for 2025. Uh, the U.S. trucking industry experienced the late cycle phase of the classic truckload cycle in 2022, leading us into the bottoming phase in early 2023. And in October 2024, the rebalancing process continues slowly through progress has been made. Or, though progress has been made. So, yeah. 
As we look ahead to 2025, the North American trucking industry is uh, posed to navigate a complex landscape shaped by economics, ep economics transitions, regu regulatory uh, changes, and evolving market dynamics. These are some of the key factors influencing the industry, including freight demands, equipment production, and uh, macro economics trends, as well as emerging challenges and opportunities. Uh, so there's like a chart here, says the classic trickle cycle, uh, mid-cycle tight conditions, demand growth, supply response, uh, it says freight demand growth, carrier, uh, and that's some tiny words I can't read all these. Well, I say it's not that great. But it's just a chart, so type in the truck. If you want to go look up trucking forecasts, or just even type, will trucking get better in 2025? These are some notes that you can help you guys if you're wanting to do some research on your own, too. Um, that's great. Uh, but it just talks about uh, stuff. And here's some more stuff. Trucking industry outlook for 2025. As we enter 2025, the U.S. economy is anticipated to face modest slowdowns with GDP growth projected to moderate to 2.0 a year over year over year. The declaration reflects the compass, columbate, oh, I can't pronounce that. I'm sorry, guys. Impacts of, of tighter um, Monterey policy, higher interest rate rates and more cautious consumer spending so uh it says slower freight growth which i hear is a problem too so um so i don't know i i hope this I hope it gets better um i hope trucking gets better for 2025 i really do so yeah and i gotta look at my phone again it's going off guys Ugh. Sorry about this. Uh, people know I do podcasts, but you know, they can't leave me alone. All right. Uh, topic six is becoming owner operator worth it in 2024. Now, my opinion before I open this topic up and talk about it, uh, I think young people, if you are really having an open mindset and you can financially afford it. You don't have a family yet. You know, you're single and all that. I think, and you're just going to, I think you can do it, but I almost recommend you dipping your feet in the water of company driver just for a while. Um, maybe two or three years, just, just to see if you like trucking, because at least you don't have to pay for all the trucking, truck equipment, you know, see if you like it because that's a lot of, uh, problems with some young drivers they want to go to the trucking school get right out of it and become owner operator and then they're in financial debt like no i would never do that. that's why i would i would personally i would probably always stay company driver because i don't want to have to pay for truck repairs and all that i want my company to but i maybe start my own company trucking company and hire drivers after i i get some years in trucking you know i might do that but as far as I, I would probably stay with Swift. Uh, I like Swift. They're a great company. I, I really like how they treat the drivers and do the driver appreciation week thing. So, it's just, that's me. I mean, I know a lot of people, they want to meme on Swift, but it, really, look at the positives. I mean, people have different experience. So, I'm sorry if your experience was bad if you did work for Swift, but you have to look at the pros, too. So, the pros, or the pros should be over here, the cons over here. So, yeah. Look, I mean... And I know they don't pay it. Some people don't like how they pay. And you just, like I said, you got to climb that ladder and see if you can get up there. You know, stay there for three years. And if you're not making anything like what you think you're worth, then yeah, then talk to you like a driver leader or something and say, hey, this isn't working out. I'm going to have to go to a different company or something. Or what What can we do here to increase pay or, you know. So anyway, let's let's get into it. Let's get into this topic here and read see what they say see if they match up with what i say uh 
the decision to leave behind your role as a company driver and start trucking, start a trucking company isn't an easy one. Like I said, it isn't easy. So that's what this article is saying as well. Um, you know, it's pretty much going to probably say what I say as well. Um, so we'll we'll look into this here. Ah, uh, oh, for oh, okay. If becoming an owner operator was easy, everyone would do it. But even though getting your business started, company with federal regulation and putting in long hours can be tough. Uh, there are many perks to starting a trucking company of your own. Like I said, uh, I that's start. It's already matching up what I'm saying. What I was saying, anyways. So, um, yeah. Uh, below we lay out the most common pros and cons of being an owner-operator truck driver to help you make one of the biggest decisions of your trucking career. Becoming an owner-operator pros. Uh, here are some top pros becoming an owner-operator. You can build a business that you're proud of. That's, yeah. Being an owner-operator gives you the opportunity to build a business with great reputation that will act as a financial assist for you in the future that you can sell at the end of your Working life, or set it up to run without you, so you can outlive, so it can outlive you, and you can leave a legacy with who taught, who thought simply working. I think that's taught simply working for yourself could leave such a who oh who thought simply working for yourself could be such an impact. Good lord, I need to work on reading. Uh, what the heck happened? Uh, you can use. Your preferred equipment and vehicles. Everything you used used to run your business. Everything you used to run your business is at your choice. There is no settling for equipment that has a strange tricks ticks has strange ticks or waiting for your company to upgrade. Uh, it also means you can make your rig feel like a home away from home in your way you may not have been able to do while you were working for an employer which is true because employers have you know rules that they don't want you you know if you want to put in a refrigerator swift don't want you to put or put in another refrigerator or another you know so there is because their equipment it's not yours you know so yeah uh you have control over how much money you make if you're a good negotiator or just have a strong advocate for yourself and you and your work then being an owner operator trick driver can be a I don't know that, um can be a big move for you i guess what i'm saying it if you're a good re reputation reputation if you get a good reputation you may be able to scale your business with additional drivers and make even more that's yeah, that'd, that'd be good. Freedom. As an owner operator, you're your own boss. What could be better, right? There's no real, there's really no better feeling than waking up every morning knowing you have no one to report to. Of course, this does come with some downsides, which we'll cover below, what they say. Uh, but the freedom of being completely independent is the biggest reason why people become and stay self-employed. Uh, you can bring a buddy, uh, a, a partner, a friend, an animal. You know, you want to ask permission to bring your partner, friend, or a furry friend so, along for the ride. While the long drives alone are the ones of the things that attract us to this career, a little bit of company for the time from time to time is certainly welcomed and can make journeys um much more pleasurable which is true i think that would help like mental health you know and socialization you know having somebody to talk to or be or keep you company like a dog or cat or something uh that that's definitely what i was talking about earlier and like why drivers quit because you know mental health and socializing you get depressed and stuff so um that's just that being your own boss, I mean, that's a pro right there, right? So, uh, yeah. 
Oh lord, I almost quit the stream. Oop, or the recording of the podcast. I don't want to do that. Um, yeah. uh, you can take time off when you want. You don't have to report to like a driver leader. You don't have to ask. You know, that's, that's another pro. You know, if you want to have off for Christmas, screw it. You can have off for Christmas, you know. Uh, your time will be dedicated your your time will be dedicated more by your finances, which would be true, than the hours someone else says to you. Should you should be working if you have savings. You can take time off. Oh, if you have savings you can take time off when you need it and when you want to. And ensure that you're always around for big family events, like, like I said, Christmas, graduations, a funeral, a birthday party, um, a big surgery, or, or something. A uh, wedding, you know. No more asking for instance or saving up vacation time, which, again, that's what I just was talking about saying, you know. So, yep, yep, yep. Uh, you can only do work, the work you enjoy. So, a lot of companies... Trucking companies take on a wide range of work, which means you may spend one week doing the work you enjoy, which, yeah, I I certainly have. Even I don't do trucking, right? I do virtual trucking, but my main job, my actual job, um, yeah, I do some days I enjoy it, or some weeks I enjoy it, and then there's other things I don't enjoy. So that's what really any job, even trucking. Uh, yeah, and then the next three work. They're actually doing work that you hate, which I just mentioned. That's not how it is when you work for yourself, which I like too. I want to start a company. I'll talk more about that and later after these trucking topics. Um, or was that? Uh, yeah, that's how. Uh, you have the choice to decide if you want to narrow your focus to uh, only serve one type of customer. Like, if you want to just be a loyal, like, just have that relationship with that one customer and just, like, say, hey, I'm going to be your main guy. You know, I, I want to do all your shipping needs, all your, you know, sh- shit like that. Um, screw it. Uh, we'll do it. You know, sign a contract or whatever you got to do and do that. Um, that, is it. that is also a great opportunity to become a um, sold out, sought out after specialists in your area, uh, you can form a business around your lifestyle. So, again, that's what I was saying. When you have your own business, it's yours. That means you can do with you. Can, that means you can do with it as you please. Want to stay close to the home? You can decide to cut back and only do. Um, Interstate work instead of doing long, the long interstate work, or long of the long interstate work you c- can work you used to do, or long interstate work you used to yeah. Want to only work two weeks of the month? Provided that provided that's financially visible for you, you can you know if you. Make the rule. You make the rules and can say no to things you don't want to. Now you got to be well disciplined as well, so you know when you you need to obviously do it. So, all right. So here's the pros of becoming an owner operator. It's all down to you. All right. Biggest factor: employed people fail to think about when they consider what it would be like to be their own boss is the additional responsibility that rests on your shoulders. Like I said, uh, suddenly you need to do the work, be the DOT compliance admin, uh, and figure out where your next job is going to come from. Unless you have a financial buffer to, or make, enough from each job you will have to juggle all this while driving though not literally haha <laughs> uh 
around the state or country. So that is, you know, you don't have that res uh, responsibility with, uh, sorry, I was looking at my, looking at myself. Um, you don't have that responsibility when you're a company driver, so it's a little bit less stressful. So you got to think about all this stuff. It's not all just, you know, rainbows and stuff when being your own boss. You know, you just great responsibilities to it. So you got to keep that in mind, definitely. Definitely keep that in mind. Um, when can you be your own worst bosses? We can be our own worst bosses. Yeah, think you're the boss. Think your boss is bad. Wait until they're with you twenty four seven inside your head. Early in your business, you'll hear your inner boss telling you what you have to do. Should you do it? Shouldn't be doing it? Are you failing at it? And so on. Ironically, many of us who have who are most suited to the life as an entrepreneur are also the most difficult to make happy. Yeah, that's true. Uh when you're your own bo own employee, leading, learning to cut yourself some slack is essential if you don't want to find yourself overworked and burnt out. It's a lot. Yeah, that's why some owner operators. There's a guy I watched called Neil. He thinks he failed as an owner operator, and this could be why, because he had to make all the decisions himself. I'm not saying that's why. I you have to watch that video again when he said, but I think that's some of the stuff too. Why they these young owner operators do it because they don't have now the owner the older operators the older folks i think they they're pretty good at it um not saying young folks aren't good at it but you just gotta have that discipline man you just gotta have that want to and stuff in the the yeah i gotta have that right mindset the mental health's gotta be in check and stuff like that uh no backup plan you know you can get tired or sick uh or emergencies comes up, or something got to to you that you don't you don't have it. You don't we don't plan for that. There's no backup plan. Nobody can, you know. What what can you do, right? So that's just some stuff about owner operator stuff. Um, yeah. Topic seven: Is there money in trucking in 2024? Is it worth it? You know, is there? Are you making enough money to survive? Um, I hear mixed stuff about it. You know, I, I really do. So, yeah. Let's check that out real quick. Um, per year, truck drivers make 91, uh, 993, uh, let's just give, this is a, okay, this actually isn't, uh, accurate, this actually really isn't good information, so. Cut, cut that out. We won't go over that topic. Um, what freight pays the most? Well, let's look. Uh, seven. Uh, all right. Uh, freight types. There's reefer. There's dry van. There's flatbed. There's tanker. There's all kinds of. Um, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, that's what it said. Uh, for example, reefer loads, refrigerator, okay, aka reefers, will generally earn more money than the. Uh, well, they, they left out dry ban on this, but then dry ban. Uh, well, it says it just says van. They didn't put dry, but yeah, the dry van because they require a specialized truck similar to flatbed loads and often have higher rates because they're heavier or larger than the average load. On top of that, flatbed loads are generally less aerodynamic, meaning the carrier will need to spend more on fuel, which will suck if you're a owner operator on that. So yeah. How to find it? If you're an owner operator, this is how you would find the highest paying loads. It says to find the most profitable loads. First thing you need to do is do research on freight rates. Uh, if you don't know how to do, go on to do that, uh, you'll end up leaving money on the table. So yeah, basically. So this just talks about you know they say refrigerated is the most 
and I figured that um, you do a lot more setting when you're cause you don't do much. Uh, I don't think you do as much drop and hook, but you do. Like I would like to just get on and go to drop and hook. So that's what I do, dry man. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Topic thirteen. So I'm working on getting some truckers on the podcast interview. Um, like I said, I know one kind of. Uh, I want to try to interview people at my work that the truck drivers at the work. So we'll try to do that a little bit. Uh, so we'll don't, um, I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, but who knows, you know, topic 14. Yes. It was my one year anniversary on Thursday, November 14th, 2024 at bell stores. Um, it's a gas station convenience store. We use marathon gas, I've been there since November 14th of 2023, and it's down past that, obviously. I want to stay there for two or three years, then I will be wanting to do something different, something else in 2023. I'll only be, or not 2023, and three years, good lord. I'll only be 23 years old. That I don't want to work at a gas station all my life. No offense, no, nothing wrong with it. You know, no offense, people who do, but I just, I have other goals and mindsets that I want to do, and I want to want um, I want to do something more I like to do more passionate about um something with computers in trucking so I have something in my mind but I'm not gonna say the plan yet until I get to that point hopefully in three years I will be at that point or two you know so when it happens I'll do a big reveal of that uh I have some great plans for that coming. Uh oh, topic sixteen. Going back to the podcasting thing. So I got a Mac Mini twenty fourteen, not the Apple Silicon, but uh, this works just for like my podcasting stuff. It would never be my main computer. You know, my main computer is over there. My Windows eleven gaming computer. Um, this Mac, I just have more room over here, and this is good for just typing notes notes and stuff because I it's more this is more my productivity work in station where I do my productivity work so yeah that's just where I'll do my stuff so, well this has been kind of a longer podcast than usual but everyone we have came to the end today of the podcast but you know we can always listen to it uh, no instructing podcast you can always listen to no podcast every Monday and you can listen to it on Spotify or on the Virtual Trucking with Noah. Oh, wait, wait, wait sorry. I, I totally read my note wrong. I, today, we have came to the end to Noah's Trucking Podcast. Like, obviously, you guys know when I say my wrap-up. Uh, you can listen to it every Monday, uh, either on the Virtual Trucking with Noah YouTube channel or Spotify. And, uh, yeah, so that will be it. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. So my reading skills weren't too sucky for you guys, and I hope everything made sense. And I'll catch you guys on the next one on Monday, next podcast on Monday. And, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.